Honourable Madra Beasley, Governor of New South Wales, Mr. Dennis Wilson. Acting Vice Chancellor, Professor Duncan Iverson. Dean of Science, Professor Ian Young. Head of School of Physics, Celine Bond. President of the Physics Foundation, Anne Green. Distinguished guests, family and friends. But last but not least, the reason why we're all gathered here this evening, the ISS Scholars of 2019. There's little advice I would dare pass on to you as you're all the smartest ones in the class. However, in the spirit of the award which the Physics Foundation has kindly bestowed upon me this evening, I would encourage you all to go out there and ask questions throughout your life. Ask questions of your peers and your mentors alike. Ask the hard questions as well as the silly ones, because they may not be as silly as you think. As always, keep an open mind and do not be afraid of failure. Good lessons are expensive. Science can only advance when individuals are prepared to break away from the traditional doctrines, never be shy of challenges, strive amounts of approach, which traditional fossil fuels are unlikely to satisfy. New, more efficient and environmentally friendly sources of energy, be it wind, solar, or nuclear, or other sources, will need to be uh, entertained or discovered. In 1989, Pons and Fleischmann achieved a cheap and abundant energy source with their cold fusion experiments, or so they thought. Unfortunately, fusion was written. Unfortunately, their claims were not able to be replicated, and thus they were scorned, and the concept of cold fusion was ridiculed by the scientific establishment. However, time has moved on, and the research into cold fusion continues under the general term of LENR, low energy nuclear reaction. I bring this to your attention because a company in uh, Berkeley, California, Brillo, Brillo in Energy, is developing some very interesting technology, and it is my belief that their research may bring about a new source of cheap and reliable energy for all. Stay tuned. Fossil fuels just aren't working. We're doing to this planet something that this planet wasn't designed for. Civilization needs a new energy technology. LENR, I think, is probably the most viable technology. It's not cold fusion. It's not a chemical reaction. It's a reaction of certain metals, nickel, palladium, with hydrogen. We have patented a control system that actually starts and stops the reaction when you need it to. This is the breakthrough that this technology has needed for the last 25 years. If we succeed in our number one goal of making this technology actually work on any commercial type of basis, it would change the conversation about how we make energy. They had done an experiment with an electrolytic cell using a palladium cathode, and I thought, palladium, there's something interesting about palladium. One of the engineers I was working with said, they use that to filter hydrogen. I said, helium won't go through? And he said, no, helium won't go through. Well, turns out that helium is actually about half the size of hydrogen. And then I remembered, oh yeah, they use palladium for the proton exchange membrane and fuel cells on the Apollo missions. That's when I said, I know what's going on, and if nobody's done it in 10 years, I'll build a reactor myself. And I started really moving in the direction of figuring out exactly what it was going to take to implement the physics that actually drives the underlying reaction so that the phenomena could be controlled and turned into a technology. Brillo and Energy has assembled a team of multidiscipline engineers and scientists to work on low-cost, non-carbon-based energy. We bring pressures, gases, temperatures, heat transfer. We bring all of that together in one machine so that we can accurately measure excess power. It's a combination of quantum mechanics and uncertainty relative to energy and the hydrogen passing through is causing the formation of neutrons and then it's an accumulation of neutrons. Pieces of the hypothesis have been simulated at Pacific Northwest National Labs and shows that electron capture actually can be driven. What's critical is to be able to control the reaction, to be able to turn it on and be able to turn it off. 
that then makes something that can be commercially useful. You know, we've developed an ability to actually control the reaction with our Q-Pulse technology. By doing that, then we're able to uh, consistently produce an excess amount of heat. Berlona Energy has two products which will compete against carbon-based fuels. One we refer to as the wet boiler, which is designed for hydronic heating, home heating, and domestic hot water. The other product is an HHT, a hydrogen hot tube, which is designed for commercial applications for generating electricity. What is currently an R&D stage will become uh, much more of a go-to-market, direct business rollout of our technology. Finding a renewable energy source, a source that can be used in the future by society and the world, would be great for everybody. It's very clear that it's possible to bring a technology to market and really make a game-changing difference for everybody on the planet.